Tonight, the Copper Coast Council Mayor claims a new roundabout on York Peninsula is causing a headache for motorists and Broken Hill's new community health facility begins to take shape. This is Southern Cross News with Fraser Goldsworthy. Good evening. The Copper Coast Council is calling on the state government to rethink a new roundabout at Federation Corner on York Peninsula. The mayor says it's leading to more confusion for motorists instead of improving road safety. A potentially fatal $3 million upgrade. The Ardrossan turn-off at the corner of the Copper Coast and York Highway has been fitted with a roundabout to reduce fatalities. Triple fatality accident a couple of years ago that has brought about these changes. But again, it got back to somebody ignoring the road rules and not giving way. The state government promised a large roundabout to allow for road train access, but council still has its concerns. It's not big enough. We were given information previously it was going to be a large roundabout yet it doesn't seem to be a large roundabout. The mayor is concerned it won't be able to cope with traffic during peak tourist periods. That it would have been better to have a dual lane around the roundabout to allow free-flowing traffic from the Copper Coast. Council says Federation Corner is still extremely dangerous, with motorists unable to see the roundabout from afar. But the state government says it meets all of the South Australian road guidelines and standards, with permanent signs set to be installed later this month. Council says it's just causing more confusion for motorists. Having some stoplights on it as well, which is normally not the case with the roundabout, I think it's going to cause some confusion. You actually can't see the roundabout until you come up over the, the rise and then, all, and then you're right on it. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. A family of four has escaped serious injury when their car overturned near Port Lincoln. At 8.40 yesterday morning, emergency crews responded to the incident on Proper Bay Road, 15 k's outside of the town centre. One woman was taken to hospital with a suspected broken wrist, but there was no serious injuries. Crews cordoned off the area and spent most of the morning clearing the scene. Two teenagers have been arrested after a number of windows were smashed at John Peary Secondary School last week. Police allege the teens threw bricks at the panes, causing extensive damage. An 18-year-old male and 16-year-old boy from Port Perry have been charged and will appear in court at a later date. Officers say they expect to make more arrests over the incident. Two Port Augusta organisations have received funding in a bid to curb re-offending rates. St John Ambulance and the Aboriginal Legal Rights Movement will provide new programs in the Port Augusta prison and community. Amelia Simpson has more. 10% by 2020 is a bold target the state government has set in a bid to reduce re-offending rates in SA prisons. Part of this is a $40,000 cash injection into two local programs here in Port Augusta to stop prisoners and those in community corrections from returning behind prison walls. Nearly $30,000 has been awarded to the Aboriginal Legal Rights Movement. The organisation will host a pilot program for 40 Aboriginal women prisoners at the prison to work through generational trauma and learn resilience and well-being. St John Ambulance will also receive a $10,000 grant to provide remote first aid and mental health training, a program for prisoners who travel to remote areas and are eligible for release. Correctional Services Minister Chris Picton told Southern Cross News in a statement the funding could curb a lifetime of crime. While it's two programs at the Port Augusta prison, the minister says reducing re-offending rates will not only improve community safety, but ease pressure on the prison system and reduce taxpayer costs. Amelia Simpson reporting there. A new report has highlighted Whaler's rental property market as one of the cheapest in the nation. Three suburbs have recorded some of the lowest median prices, but a local expert says that could change soon. It's no secret Wireless property market is at the lower end of the scale as economic conditions drag down prices. CoreLogic's 2017 Best of the Best report backs that up, with Wireless having some of the lowest rental unit prices in the nation. Just shop around. Yeah, there's, there's plenty to choose from. It's a good market at the moment, those looking at buying and selling. 
it, it's, it's a good market. While a Stuart was the third cheapest in the country with an average price of $135 a week, with Wyler and Nori and the Wyler CBD, the fifth and tenth cheapest respectively. A bit surprised with Wyler itself because Wyler is, is where the more expensive homes are. But there is some unit complexes in the Wyler town area, but mostly um, they're, they're just residential homes. But the tide is turning. Mr Foran says his firm had its busiest last quarter in years as confidence returned to the market. And while it'll take time, he expects vacancies to drop and prices to rise. November, December were good months and it's um, progressed into January as well. So we've seen and prices have started to increase um, from a rental point of view. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Stay with us after the break. The first piece of the Silver City's new health facility is trucked into town. That's next. Police have arrested and charged a man over the discovery of methamphetamine during a traffic stop. Just before six yesterday morning, officers pulled over a vehicle in Knight Street in Wyala Stewart. Police allegedly found eight grams of ice, which is estimated to equate to 80 street deals. The man was bailed to face court in March. A man has been seriously injured after falling from his motorbike in Port Augusta West. Police and emergency services were called to the scene on a dirt road off of the Stewart Highway before 3 p.m yesterday afternoon. The man was airlifted to the Royal Adelaide Hospital for treatment. Police are investigating the circumstances of the crash. The first part of Broken Hill's new community health centre has been trucked into town. The multi-million dollar facility is being built off-site before being transferred to the Silver City. The first piece of a 42-piece puzzle. It's massive and it's really exciting to see something coming out of the ground. The inaugural module that will form the new community health centre marks a major milestone in the project's timeline. There's still a few on the road to come, uh, but the first three modules have landed on, on the Crystal Street site uh, today. Hutchinson Builders was awarded the tender late last year and it's constructing the modules at its facility in Toowoomba, west of Brisbane. The parts are transported a staggering 1,400 kilometres to their new home on Crystal Street. Within about sort of two weeks from now, this building will be all sort of bolted together on the site and we'll actually see the, the skeleton of it um, come together. Foundation work is complete and now contractors are tasked with craning the pieces into position. While the delicate work is underway, motorists and pedestrians are advised Sulfide Street will be closed during the day. In eight days they hope to have all the modules here and on site, um, so I, I dare say this sort of part of town is going to be a little bit uh, congested for the next couple of weeks. The Community Health Centre is scheduled for completion in the second half of 2018. Patrick Reinke, Southern Cross News. Researchers from UniSA are trialling a project to help regional cancer patients get online support. They've created a video series featuring survivors and patients from the region to help reassure those who need it most. If a cancer diagnosis isn't daunting enough, for many in the region it's this. Probably the biggest problem is that the only place in South Australia that you can receive radiotherapy is still in Adelaide. And that often means being away from home for six weeks. Psychologist Dr Kate Fennell and oncologist Professor Ian Olver developed the online video series for cancer patients in the region to know they're not alone. We hope that it kind of makes people feel less isolated and more aware that they're not the only ones um, who are struggling with these sorts of things. John, a Port Augusta local, even sharing his story. The hardest part was leaving home, leaving everything behind and and fantastic that they were so willing to open up and share their experiences. The program is fuelled by a staggering statistic. Those living in remote parts of Australia are 35% more likely to die within five years of a cancer diagnosis than their city counterparts. The researchers hope that these new releases will break down barriers to cancer treatment and support. Even though it had made it challenging, the fact that they often had had to travel a long way for treatment, um, you know, these people all really valued their rural communities. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. The state Liberals say they'll force local councils to publish their travel expenses if elected in March. They say ratepayers deserve to know how council rates are spent and one mayor has already voiced some support. We're continually flooded with claims of MPs misusing taxpayer money on travel, yet very little information is available at a local government level. Those interested can access it, but it can come at a cost, something the state opposition claims is wrong. 
uh, the council can, under local government act, actually charge them a fee to do that. We don't think that's right. In the wake of a number of controversies across the state, Mr Pisoni says the opposition will make accountability a priority. It'll force local government bodies to publish travel expenses in its annual report. We think it's a way of holding uh, councils uh, uh, more accountable. Uh, and um, uh, this would also include in the decisions that were made in Canberra. While Mayor Lynn Brewer says most already have strict policies and checks to ensure money isn't wasted. We do have a very strong safeguard and that's called the CEO in any council organisation and also the finance department in an organisation. She says she'd have no objections to council publishing its travel spend. If they got elected and they brought this policy in, it wouldn't be an impact on Wyala Council and most other councils. It's fine to have safeguards. A spokesman for the state government says it's currently in consultation with the LGA and it supports the opposition's proposal. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. News. Still to come tonight, rev heads gather in Port Lincoln for the annual Show and Shine Festival. Details next. A new Lifeline mega store is officially open for business at its new premises in Clare. It's hoped the store will bring in some much needed dollars for suicide prevention and crisis help in country communities. Lifeline's gift of life to the Clare community. <laughs> Opening the new mega store doors for the first time today to a crowd of customers. The Clare community has just been really supportive, and um, unfortunately, um, you know, um, we're seeing that there's an increase in suicides. The new mega store offering a range of affordable clothing and essential items, with all proceeds going straight back into crisis support and suicide prevention. A larger space, give customers um, more choices and uh, most importantly to raise some money for suicide prevention. That's really the most exciting and valuable part about uh, spending the retail dollar in this particular shop in Clare. The megastore isn't a typical op shop as it also stocks brand new clothing. It's really unique because it mixes new with recycled. Toys, DVDs, CDs, a little bit of everything in the store. And today's turnout's a reflection of the strong need for support in country communities. Suicides, whether it's uh, one or two, is one or two too many. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Cars from eras gone by were once again in the spotlight during Port Lincoln's annual show and shine over the weekend. Hundreds of classic cars were put on display, including some historical local throwbacks. From Holdens to hot rods and highway patrol cars, one sold favourites returning to their former glory. Once a year um, to get a great turnout, wow. The crowds turned out for a walk down memory lane. Even the king made an appearance. Probably a car that Elvis himself would have driven uh, back in the 50s. Port Lincoln's annual show and shine offering a glimpse into Australian automotive history. The often comment that you say, oh, I used to own one of those, I used to own one of those. You know, everyone says, I wish I still had it now. This year's event attracted more cars than ever, thanks to lower registration fees, allowing members to once again drive their priceless machines. The value of these historic, some of these historic cars has just gone you know, beyond anybody's wildest dreams. This Model 1 Bathurst by six laps in 1979 and set a lap record on the last lap. Driven by Peter Brock, there's now less than 100 left. This one fetching upwards of $300,000. You know, there's no more of them. And, and now that Holden have closed down officially, well, I just love them. But for others, it was just a chance to show off their pride and joy. Collectible type cars are becoming collectible and those that were collectible years gone by are becoming more collectible. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. To local cricket now, and South Broken Hill has recorded its first win of the season in a hard-fought 2020 against North. Patrick Reinke joins us now, and despite the chilly conditions on Friday night, Pat, things were heating up at Jubilee Oval. That's right, Fraser. Broken Hill cricket was under lights on Friday night, with the South and North Twilight 2020 game not failing to put on a show. 
South won the toss and chose to bat first, but they struggled to make a good score. Three of the side's top four batsmen were sent back to the sheds with ducks. The Roos found stability through the likes of Andrew Suckling and Paul Nicholas, and a wagging tail of Mitch Henderson and James Massaro saw the red and white finish on 74. It wasn't the biggest 2020 total in history, but South fought to defend it. The game was full of thrills and plenty of spills, delighting those in attendance. Needing early wickets, South got two big ones, dismissing the damaging Cody Howard and Tobias Hack for nine runs between them. North steadied and was sitting comfortable at 3 for 47 after 12 overs. But as the rain fell, so did the wickets. Vela went first, then it was Letcher. Martin caught behind. Berryman and Victory LBW and Larkins had his stumps knocked over. It was South Demolition. On the verge of their first win of the A-grade season, the Roos kept up the pressure. Tom Davey was the last wicket to fall, his frustration clearly noticeable. South home by 12 runs. And in the second game, West had no problem dispatching an undermanned central to win by eight wickets. Over to Port Lincoln and Southern Air breezed past Lincoln South. A stunning century from Ryan Cottrell saw Charlton dispatch Tasman and Todd River just narrowly defeated Waybacks. To Port Pirie and it was a tight win for Solomon Town and an easy win for Wandera. While the cricket returns this weekend. So Fraser, some great games to start off the new year. Let's hope they continue in the weeks ahead. And I'll be back tomorrow night to wrap up all the other sports from around the regions. Good on you, Pat. Thank you. Patrick Reinke in Broken Hill there. Well, stay with us. After the break, I'll have all your local weather details. Welcome back. It was a fine day right across our centres today. It climbed up to 32 for Port Augusta. Temps in the mid-20s for Wyala and Port Lincoln. Warmer in Broken Hill, reaching 35 there. It topped 28 in Adelaide. On the satellite, cloud in the state's west isn't bringing any showers. Skies are clear in the east of the state due to a high-pressure system. Southeasterly winds on the Gulf tomorrow, up to 20 knots. Seas high at 2 metres. Sunrise just before 6.25. Sunny skies right across our region tomorrow with some beautiful summer temperatures. 36 for Port Augusta, 31 in Wyala. The mercury will climb into the high 20s on the Lower Air Peninsula. 28 for Port Lincoln. Broken Hill set for 35. 32 in Clare. Looking ahead in the west, temps will climb into the mid-30s in Port Lincoln, 36 on Thursday. Warmer in Cleve, atop of 35 to end the working week. And a scorcher on the way for Woodner, 44 degrees on Thursday, before dropping back to 40 on Friday. Further up the Gulf, no relief in sight for Wyala, climbing up to 37 by Wednesday, 42 for Thursday. The chance of a shower on Friday, 38. Ever so slightly warmer for Port Augusta, 43 degrees on Thursday, 41 on Friday. Similar conditions in Kadena, a top of 36 for Wednesday, 41 on Thursday. And finally, Port Pirie is following in the footsteps of the rest of the region, up to 42 degrees there. Clare will be cooler, only slightly though, 37 on Wednesday. Broken Hill heading for a very very warm start to the weekend, the mercury climbing into the 40s. Very hot there. And that's all the news to now. Thanks for your company. I'll have updates later. Until then, have a lovely evening. Good night.